Hey guys, this is Marshall from Limited Resources, and uh, you know, I've been getting into this whole card altering thing, and I've had a ton of people ask me, like, oh, a lot of basic questions about what you use to do it, <clears throat> which kind of paint, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I thought I'd do a short tutorial here. Now, I have to preface it by saying that I don't actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> so this is just what I use and what I figured out to use, but I'm constantly learning this stuff. And I don't have any painting experience prior to starting this either. So, uh, you know, there might be better options than what I'm uh, showing, but these have worked well for me. So the first thing people always ask is about the paint. What kind of paint should I use? Because there's like watercolors and acrylics and stuff like that. And the answer is actually acrylics. That's what everybody seems to use for these. I'm sure you could use something else, but this is what everybody uses. And there's two two kinds of acrylics. The first ones are these, uh, th these are called liquid acrylics and basically <clears throat> they come in these little tiny bottles and they're they're pretty thin. They're, uh, th the paint inside is is pretty liquid. It's, it's very uh, free-flowing. It doesn't stand on its own and uh, this is pretty much what I want what you want to use. Now I've been switching over to these but these are actually the only two I have now and I just got them. The ones that I've been using since I started are similar they are also acrylic paint, but they come in a tube like this. And uh, <clears throat> these ones are not as thin, basically. Uh, the, the paint, when it comes out, is a bit thicker, and you have to water it down a little bit. Uh, nobody told me that, of course, but <laughs> you, you have to water it down a little bit uh, to be able to put it on the card effectively so it doesn't get clumpy and kind of thick. Uh, and I think that just going to these smaller bottles with the uh, liquid acrylic as opposed to a little bit more substantial one, even though they're pretty much the same thing, this one just kind of is already, or actually it's called a fluid acrylic, I should say, that's what it says. Um, it's already a little bit closer to where you want it, you don't have to add as much uh, water and do any mixing and stuff. Now these are uh, kind of smaller, where these tubes are a lot bigger, but I mean, basically when I started, I just bought this, which is like kind of like a beginner tube, it had like six of them. And then I bought one extra one that I haven't really used much. And uh, <clears throat> and then I picked up these ones after I realized that I was using something different than what most people were. Now, again, they're all acrylics, and, and it's just a matter of watering it down to get it right. Um, so the next thing people ask about is, are the brushes. And I've got a bunch because, again, I didn't really know what to get. So I went to a local art place, and I, and I kind of picked up a bunch of different ones. But the ones that I actually use... The ones that I use the most are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one it looks like this. And you can see it's kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of squared off, I guess, a little bit. Um, and it's like... I can't remember what it's called. They have names for these brushes, but whatever. It's small. That's the key. Uh, just to sh give you like an example, that's how big the brush is. So it's, you know, a little taller than the frame. And I actually use this for the most part for um, for for doing the edges. And then I'll use this for mixing and stuff as well. And then another brush that I use a lot <clears throat> is sort of a, I'd call it just like a normal brush. I don't really know how else to put it, but it looks like this. It's not that small. It's kind of medium sized. Um, you can see it's about when you push it down, it's a little smaller than the mana symbol. And I use this for uh, a lot of multi-purpose stuff. And then the last brush that I'll use um, often looks like this. And as you can see, it's quite small. Um, you know, it's it's maybe not this. I have a smaller one than this too. This one here um, for for fine details and such. But for almost all the stuff that I do, this is about as small as as you really need to go. So those are the brushes that I use. Um, another thing that you can get that a lot of people use, and I don't really feel like I've gotten good at this yet, but um, some people use it, are these pens. And basically these come in um, a full, th these are all black, but they come in totally different sizes, ranging from like this, which is like kind of like a wedge, and then even, they even have ones like, I think this one. No, not this one. Well, they have some of them that have like kind of a, um, I think it's this one here. Yeah. So if you see this one, it's got kind of a softer tip on it, yeah, but it's pointed and it, they, they call that like a brush tip. So you can almost kind of paint with it a little bit. And then it goes all the way down to something very, very small. 
like this, you can, I mean, look, yeah, you can barely even see the tip on it. It's so, so small, this, um, these pens. And these are good just for, like, detail work, for adding in some stuff that maybe you can't really get in there with a brush. And, uh, and then also you can use them for, like, kind of defining different parts of the thing. Now, again, this is where I kind of, you kind of lose me because I don't really know how to do that stuff yet. I also picked up a set of these, which is basically the same pens, except for that these are all colored. And they all have that brush tip on them like this. This one's green. And uh, I, I, I've used these sparingly because I just don't really know how yet. But I have seen people use them to pretty good effect. You can use it to help complement the paints and to maybe darken or lighten them. So those are cool. Um, a few other knickknacks that I have. Um, this I have one of these things. And basically what you do is you put the paint in here. What I do is I put the paint in here in dots. Like I'll take this and I'll put just a, a squeeze of it there, 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 of the colors that I want to use, and then I'll, I'll mix the paint with water in each of the, in, in these things, so each one can be sort of a different color that I want to use for the, for the card that I'm doing. And these, this thing's just really cheap, and it's just plastic, and it's real easy to clean, but I found this to be totally necessary, and I didn't have that before. What else do I have here? Um, I've also got a, a couple of these. I don't really know if everybody uses these, but these are um, bigger pens, with, uh, you know, th th that are basically like just shades of gray. I don't know if you can really see the color here, but they're they're basically like I'll use them to sort of shadow, I guess. Um, like I'll put, I'll actually put this right on the paint and just uh, sort of use it to help shadow some of the areas. Um, another thing that you that you can use uh, to help with, with uh, your your painting is, is tape like this. This is like artist tape. <clears throat> I just got it at the artist, at the shop. Uh, it comes off, it doesn't rip off the paper or anything like that, but it's good and thick. It's just kind of like high quality masking tape. And then this is like an eraser. And uh, you can use this to erase the edges of the card. Uh, you don't always need to do this, however. Um, it just depends, like on this card, for example, it's black, and then there's going to be some, some white here, but then it's black again. And so you wouldn't really, I, like I wouldn't erase the edges of this card because you're just going to cover this all with black pretty much if you're going to do like a regular extension on it. Where, uh, if, if, but if that wasn't the case, if it was white, if everything was going to be white or a really light color going to the edge, when, when you hit the edge and it's really harsh line into black like this, that shows up pretty, like, you have to have a lot of layers of paint to overcome that. And so what you want to do is just take an eraser and you have to push really hard and, uh, for a little bit, but then the, the ink will come off. And you don't actually even need to get it all off. You're just trying to basically get this hard black edge off of the, uh, off of the card so that you can't see it underneath the paint. Because the paint will pick up the colors that are underneath it, too, depending on how much you use. Um, I have one more thing to show you. Actually, I have two more things. And the first one is very simple. And it's just a bowl. You, you put water in this. You need to constantly use water for this process, cleaning out the, uh, cleaning out the, uh, the brushes and, and, you know, restarting and stuff. So uh, having a little cup of water like this is really handy. And the other thing, this one's really important, and this is one that took me a while to, to get a trick on, is this. So these are just toothpicks. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard to imagine what you would do with painting in a toothpick, at least it was for me, but what I figured out is, uh, from the from the forums and stuff people recommended this is it when you you know inevitably when you do the cards you're gonna go over the edge a little bit or maybe even a lot and you know you're gonna and what you do is if you just scrape it gently with a toothpick this acrylic paint comes off perfectly like it doesn't rip off the paint next to it and these toothpicks end up being these really invaluable tools for you uh, one little tip that I've uh, found as well is if you actually get the toothpick a little bit wet uh, it makes the paint come off easier so that's going to cover it for sort of the tools of the trade that I've been using. Now, again, you can use many different things, and I'm sure that there's going to, there would be other people that would give you uh, similar advice or maybe add on to it or say, I wouldn't use that. But I know that this is the stuff that most of the people use, and this is the stuff that's worked for me. So maybe as, as I get better at this, I'll do another tutorial about how to actually paint or at least just the process because the thing is, is that I'm still figuring it out myself. Uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope that uh, I'll be able to keep doing these.